coming from the fact of the brush uh, dancing on the top of the paper, and then I have that rough paper, and the paper is dry, so I can get dry brushwork. If I had wet the surface of this paper, you'd never get that. That's right. It would all be a beautiful soft wash. All my edges would be soft, right? So I'm going to leave this like this, and it's going to start to dry a little bit. <clears throat> and now let's do a couple of, of little after, late afternoon, almost sunset kind of clouds. So these ones came across, and they streaked across that way. Well, yes, the picture shows something entirely different. Now we just do make-believe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do make-believe. I like make-believe. It takes guts to do that. Yes! Doesn't you got things of you? You're doing guts. Lot. Come on do in. Do you want to leave it open now since the no noise is gone? Yes, yeah, since the noise is gone, we can have it open again. Open? Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, oh, so okay. it'll be a little bit better light. Here. Um, and so you can see, because I waited a little bit, the, um, the clouds are soft but not running. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm hmm. And even up here, it's almost dry, uh -huh. right? It doesn't take long. Let it recede, I dry it. And you might notice I'm always daubing off the brush, right? Because I don't actually need that much water on the brush to have all of the interesting watercolor effects that we want to achieve, right? Everything's wet from the get-go, so. Don't, don't worry too much about not having enough water. As long as you've done your wash, then, and I have this water in the body of the paper, it's all wet enough. Um, and now I'm just playing. So I'm gonna say these clouds, for the demo, this is good. Because we're gonna come into this field now, and we're going to paint Um, these little undulations in the field, right? For, they're in the field, in the reference photo, there are these, these shadows, right? And, and we could put them in as a, as a blue, the way they are in this. This is almost like a blue or a dark brown. But my experience is that the more important thing is the value, and, and that the value needs to be darker. And after that, we can play. And if I use a blue, it'll look dead. Mm -hmm. But if I use a darker, richer, <coughs> thicker orange, it'll have a sort of, um, like a light that has cascaded into the shadows of, of the grass, right? So it'll look like a warm shadow. Warm shadows are really interesting if you look like, look up Soroya's paintings or something on the beach. He's always got these interesting warm shadows because um, the light is bouncing off the floor and coming up to hit all the sand, it's coming up to hit the person, and, and um, Sergeant also has a lot of warm shadows. And the really important part is just that I have a darker value. That's what's going to give me the shadow. So I'm actually going to use a sack. I'm going to get So I'm going to use a, a, an orange, and the orange is very thick. This is the stuff from the tube, it's very goopy. I, I, my brush is not very wet. I'm not using the mop. No. The mop would hold too much water. It'll all disappear. So I'm using this. If I use a synthetic, it'll not. It'll do the job, but it'll leave a mark sometimes. It's really strong edge mm -hmm. because it's a synthetic. It's not as floppy as this interesting Chinese brush, mm -hmm. calligraphy brush. So I have this very thick pigment, and therefore it'll be a darker value because this other pigment application when I did the wash for the field. It was all diluted with water. <coughs> so I'm looking at the sheen. The light bounces off of the water, and then you can get a sense of how wet things are. Mm. Would you call that a little wet? or? Uh, still pretty wet. Considering he hasn't really put any water on, on it. Off <laughs> of the paper. <laughs> <laughs> I did do a wash. A the wash was dry, right, but I mean, yes. So. So right now I'm still in this mode where 
Everything is uh, wet into wet. Everything has a soft edge. Pardon me, Jackie. Sorry. Not at all. Everything is a soft edge, right? The clouds, to me, here I have an orange sky with orange clouds and some sort of interesting yellow ground with purple shadows. <laughs> it's all the same. Now it's a yellow sky with purple clouds and a nice warm ground plane. They're, the shapes are all the same. They're all soft edged shapes. The only difference is that since this is down here, we think it's the ground, mm -hmm. right? So they're all wet into wet shapes and that's why I'm doing them all in one go. They all have soft edges. Later, when I want to make the mountains and the trees and the barn, I need edges. So everything must be dry. I can still go through this process where I wet the back, but the surface has to be dry. Okay. And then we go. I'm going to make a little bit of brown here in the foreground. For this other kind of grassy stuff. Mm -hmm. the, this one I use a cadmium orange for the orange, and then I have a burnt sienna here. Yeah, but the, it's really interesting. I went through this space, um, you know, just because I say it's cadmium orange doesn't mean much. I, I went and I had a cadmium orange from M. Graham, and I really liked it. It was this hue. Mm -hmm. And then I got, new, um, I got new cadmium orange from some other company. No. Not the same orange. Too red. I got another one. Nope. Too yellow. It's like dealing with dark colors. Yeah. It, they day. say it's cadmium orange, but even... <laughs> I can say it's orange, and that doesn't mean anything. And then I can say it's cadmium orange, and that also doesn't necessarily mean anything. So, um, it's an orange, and it's a pretty um, warm red orange, as the oranges go. Um, and it does what I like it to do. So, the other thing that we can do in this phase we can play with water. So I could just leave this as it is. But why? There's lots more opportunity <laughs> to ruin it. So I have here a brush. This is a little synthetic. It doesn't carry very much water. And it's clean. There's no paint in it. And I can apply this water to the painting. And since the painting is wet, the water will push and expand and move the pigment that's already on the surface of the painting as if I was baking a brush stroke with the, with the pigment. Um, and it keeps moving until it finds an equilibrium, right? That's its goal. So if the rest of the painting was very dry, it would expand some short distance, and then it wouldn't expand as far because the painting's very dry. If the painting's very wet, it'll keep expanding into it and just dissolve into it. So we can definitely see things are drying out. Up here, it's a matte it's finish now. Dry. It's mm -hmm. basically dry. If I did it now, I would 100% get a blossom. Mm -hmm. and, and if I do it down here, it's, it's going to be soft still. Okay. So I'm going to tilt this, and that's going to make the pigment move the water. Move downhill. And I daub it off, and away we go. And this is always about patience, because it keeps moving. If I do it above where I had um, a darker application that it has more pigment to push when it moves, right? Because it's drier. Yes, basically it's drier and a thicker um, dilution, right? It's not as, it's not as um, diluting, right? It's not as thin, it doesn't have as much water in it. So this is just to provide something for us to rest the ground on, right? We want a, a variety of uh, values 